Hello and welcome to Launchtime Politics, reaching you live from our global headquarters here in the nation's commercial nerve center, Lagos. I'm Jeffrey Uzama. Here's what's coming up on the program. Governorship candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Senator Mondo Pueblo, receives party flag from President Bola Tinubu ahead of September polls. Governor of Nasarawa State, Abdullahi Sule, asks Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Obi to support government of President Bola Tinubu, maintaining that politics is over. And troops avert a kidnap attempt by violent extremists rescued the abductees in Tantua, a community of Kajuru local government area of Kaduna State. We begin the tracking of the policy from the National Assembly where the President of the Senate, Goswil Lakpabio, assures that the Student Loan Amendment Bill will address lack of funding among Nigerian students. During a public hearing on the Student Loan Scheme, Scholarship and Higher Education Financing on the Student Loan Appeal and Reenactment Bill 2024, it says the legislative agenda of the 10th National Assembly will enhance the standard of living of Nigerians. Our correspondent, Gloria Mezueke, who reports, brings us this particular story, amongst other activities at the Senate. Barely one week after the National Assembly passed the student's loan bill for the second reading, a joint committee conducts a one-day public hearing to review the repeal and reenactment bill 2024. Are the deputy the president of the Senate, Senator Jibrin Baral, who represents the Senate president, reminds of the gains accruing from the student's loan fund. Today's joint hearing, which focuses on student loan, took access to higher education, repeal and reenactment bill 2024, with no doubt, add to the quality of legislations the president's National Assembly will be quit to our citizenry at the end of its tenure. In a technical session, some major aspects of the bill are highlighted. Amali, less than 10% of Nigeria graduates get reabsorbed into the labor force upon completion of their youth service. We therefore proposed extending the minimum repayment duration to five years, as is evident that life after graduation is challenging due to lack of job opportunities in the country. The only offense under this legislation now is not failure to pay, but if in the process of your declarations to the fund, you provide false information, then you have now violated the law. However, the senators want a thorough review of the bill for a smooth implementation. The joint committee is expected to turn in their report this week. To do more. Separately, the Minister of the FCT appeared before the National Assembly in defense of a 1.147 trillion Naira budget for the FCT. He makes a request for the approval for security votes. About the issue of security, it was, the Senate was surprised to hear that there's nothing called security votes in the FCT. And we're talking about security. So these are the common kind of lapses we normally have. I will plead that you take into consideration this issue of security uh, vote. He and also narrates how he saved 53 million naira for the government by renegotiating the Abuja light rail contract. The minister bemoaned the challenge of government contract inflation, a situation he uh, vows he would strongly resist. And, uh, From the National uh, Assembly, Gloria Umezuki, Channels Television been. News. And aside from that, they are... And in not too far away Nasarawa State, Governor Abdullahi Sule has asked the presidential candidate of the Labour Party in the 2023 general election, Mr. Peter Obi, to work with President Bola Tinubu in moving Nigeria forward. The governor made a call when he hosted Mr. Obi at the government house in Lafia and a courtesy visit. On his part, Mr. Obi, in agreement, commended the ongoing infrastructural development, maintaining that he will always lend his support for issues that concern the well-being of the people. I'll call on you, sir, because I know you have the experience 
and you have also the competencies and the capacity to support Mr. President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in order for us to be on the same page. So, sir, I'm calling on you to have the opportunity always to share. He's your friend, he's your colleague. We were on in Lagos together, and I'm sure you will be able to contribute your own quota, even without the rest of the world knowing what you are contributing. So that Nigeria needs all the support, and President Bola Metinibu needs all the support that he can get in order to get us on track. The country, country's challenges cannot be resolved by only one person, anywhere. And I'm sure you have contributions to make, just like you are making in Nasarawa State by drilling the boreholes that you are doing and contributing for the period of the fasting. Well, we did tell you that Mr. Peter will be on his own. Uh, maintain that as far as the issues concern the people, uh, he's going to contribute his own quota uh, in the leadership uh, of the country. Uh, to the leadership and the development of the country, I should say. Let's now move on now and tell you that the troops of one division in Kaduna State have averted a kidnap attempt by violent extremists and rescued the abductees in Tantatu community of Kajiro, local government area of Kaduna State. A statement by the Director, Army Public Relations, Major General Oyem Manwachiku. It says the troops swiftly tracked the insurgents who had earlier attacked the community in numbers and in large numbers and abducted some of the villagers as hostages. The troops are said to have pursued the insurgents, engaging them, and subsequently rescuing 16 kidnapped victims. The troops are still on the manhunt to rescue the release of more victims in areas uh, that have uh, been cordoned off and uh, been search and rescue going on, as becomes uh, in an area rather has become synonymous with the abduction of persons. As the military continues to admonish uh, its officers to remain vigilant to avert possible more kidnap of citizens in that particular area as well as other parts of the country. In the meantime, the FCT administration in collaboration with the FCT police have embarked on a clearance of escape routes used by kidnappers in the nation's capital. Speaking at one of the sites at a port residential area of Abuja, the Secretary Command and Control Center of the FCTA, Mr. Peter Olumuji, says the trees being cleared provide cover for kidnappers who escape into Nasarawa State. We'll now shift gears now to the incident that uh, we've been tracking literally from the weekend all the way till now. We have told you uh, that two things have happened in Delta State in recent time. The one that grabbed the first headline was actually the incident that about 16 soldiers were killed. But there's another that had to do with uh, some riders of motorcycle hoodlums, as we reported yesterday, are taking over the roads and major markets in places like Asaba and Okpanam in Oshimili North and south local government areas. According to eyewitnesses, it has to do with a group of motorcycle riders who took to the street in anger and they are destroying property. According to the police PRO, Mr. Bright Adafe, the motorcycle riders say they are protesting or they were protesting the death of two of their colleagues who died on Sunday night during an enforcement order by the police or by the government uh, tax force. Uh, security personnel have been deployed in this area, but we understand that there are pockets of violence still going on. You can see those destruction of uh, tricycles and other things, uh, vehicles in the area. So there has been some level of chaos. And look at the buildings also destroyed. Uh, the background is the fact that two of their colleagues were killed um, and they are now quite angry. Uh, protesting all of this, but it appears hoodlums have now taken over all of these protests and now destroying property, vehicles, and all whatnot. So that is the focus of our conversation. We're being joined on the program by a member representing the Oshimili North State constituency, Mr. Frank Esenwa. Mr. Esenwa, thank you so much for coming on the program. Thank you for having me. Good all right, you know, when things like this happen, we hear all kinds of and versions of a particular story, but you are the representative of the people. So 
uh, it is very natural that we get exactly what is really, really going on with the latest development as far as this protest that has now um, escalated into this violence is really all about. Uh, so, pause it for us. What exactly happened? What triggered this? We hear that two motorcycle riders were killed. Is there something beyond that? And why is this escalating? Well, there are confirmed reports about the death of two motorcycle riders, as you said. Uh, till the moment, I can't say I have the full details of that. Uh, but I'm quite aware of the rioters' behavior of some of the bike riders and then, of course, some um, other chains and street miscreants who joined in the fray. Uh, it's quite condemnable. Uh, the penchant for most persons to resort to rioters and van vandalism uh, even got that. Of course, you know, my constituency is part of the conurbation, that is the Asaba Okpana metropolis. Okpanam is actually within uh, my, it was within the capital territory that is, there's really no boundary as such if you, if you come around here to see. So I'm aware some of them went into up some market areas of Okpanam trying to cause some mayhem there. And uh, like I said, the behavior is quite condemnable. The, the police and the authority, they are in control of it. The situation has been calmed down. Fortunately, they went and did some damage also in the sister constituency called, uh, that is Oshimil South. That is the much I can say for now. But as I said, the situation is under control. The trigger for this, apparently, uh, from the report we hear, is as you've confirmed that two persons were killed um, in this whole uh, incident before they took to the street to protest and this turned violent. Uh, tell us exactly what form of execution of maybe an order would have led to the death of two motorcycle riders. Well, as I said, the information is still quite scanty. The police are on top of it, and I'm sure the other security agencies are looking into that. Yes, there's some regulation, law as it were, about uh, uh, riding the bikes, I think after 7 p.m. in the evening. And uh, from what I gathered, as I said, yet unconfirmed, yet to be confirmed rather, uh, there's a tax force or there's an agency that takes care of having to enforce the law concerning riding your bike at past 7 p.m. in the metropolis, I believe. I'm sure they have their liberty to ride in their nooks and crannies, areas that are not covered. But as you know, uh, most persons are want to disrespect the law. And then, of course, any society that exists without enforcement of law is just, it will be chaotic. So I guess in the process, my guess, I don't have any confirmed report to that effect, is that perhaps some one or two of them have been arrested in the past or their bikes have been impounded. So in the situation we find ourselves with all the pent up, uh, I mean, pent up anger as to the economy and what the country is offering us at the moment, you you can take. All right, Mr. Samuel, if you can hear me, uh, to take I guess advantage of it. Okay, uh, for a moment uh, we lost a signal, so we didn't hear all you said. But I know that as a politician, uh, Technically, we can say these are your constituents because when you want to vie for office, probably these are some of the people you had to, to talk to uh, to support your ambition. Now that this has occurred um, and they're in the lower cadre of the economy, besides what the investigation that is going on, whatever the government is saying, have you been able to reach, to reach out to maybe the union or some persons directly involved in this? And what are they telling you besides what the police or anyone will say? Yes, I've um, had cause to interrogate one or two persons. Up now, the union know, and uh, of course, I interact with. I stop intermittently at places, talk to Okada riders and Keke riders as to what is actually. A lot of them have different uh, sides to the story. You know, most of them just hear and they dwell on hearsay. And as a lawyer, a trained lawyer, I don't dwell on hearsay. I would want to be seized of the complete facts 
to be able to, of course, at some point in time, we'll have interactions with them before the campaigns we did. And then we also do going forward. It's a continuous process. You know, like I said, the anger and the land is much from various things. And then people begin to look for opportunity to vent as to what is going on. So there will be room for some tension. But nevertheless, the situation is calm now. It's under control and we'll be going forward. I'm sure some of those who committed those acts deliberately might be in hiding now because you just cannot disobey the law and expect to get away with it, no matter who you are. So before I go to other questions, uh, before we let you go, uh, is there a plan from your end, uh, the constituency level, uh, that you will be able to support those whose, prop whose property have been destroyed in collaboration with the government? Because there are innocent people are involved in all of this. There are some people who don't even know what's going on and their properties have been touched. Yes, yes, yes. I don't speak for the government, but... Speaking for myself and from my constituency, that is Sushimil North, there are plans and certainly we will implement one or two things to make sure we'll uh, resolve and then get sorted out persons who are affected. Of course, we have the state emergency uh, agency, emergency management agency that takes care of things like that, that whenever they come up. But then again, we we'll need to look at the core issues and then identify as much as possible from my constituency side of it, not much was not much damage was done. A few persons had their bikes burnt, more back on you, you know, but those have not been identified yet because a lot of them have not come up. I believe the state governor will do something quite positive. At the All moment, right. he's still having to attend to some other issues that are border and security in the state and All right, honorable I, I, I my apologies, uh, totally out of time, but I, I must, I must uh, ask you this particular question. But I am happy you mentioned time and again in your submissions, you said things like the anger due to the economy. Um, and I'm sure that as a member of the House of Assembly, uh, you must be putting the government on their toes to ensure that they alleviate the pains of the people so that some of this pent up anger can be doused. But the question I want to ask you before I let you go is the incident that uh, happened in uh, Ugelin South now. Uh, the way soldiers were killed. Um, from uh, uh, a house perspective, I know you represent Oshimili, but this is the state now. Uh, what, what is the latest in terms of what's happening in that particular community called Okwama? Do you have any information that you may want to share with us? Well, 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 the security persons are attending to that as we speak, and even right this morning, the Delta State House of Assembly passed a resolution we condemn in its entirety. As I said, I'm not the spokesman for the state, neither am I for the health, but of a truth this morning, we just passed a resolution condemning the killing of soldiers. That's the last base, apart from God Almighty. The soldiers are our last bastion of uh, security protection. Why would anyone in his right senses kill soldiers? Of course, on innocent mission to broke up peace in that region. So we, we have in due course, I'm sure you get to hear about the resolution, the full details of that resolution of the House on that matter. We sympathize and condole with the federal government, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, of course, the Nigerian military. It is not something to be heard of. It's painting us in real bad light and we are indeed in very serious mourning mood with the families of those who were killed. And uh, uh, the situation there is uh, under control at the moment. There's not any major mishap, any serious mishap thereafter. And uh, let me just say the security. Oh, okay. Uh, the member representing Oshimili North in the Delta State House of Assembly, Mr. Frank Asenwa, apologies for that uh, technical glitch. Um, we will now, yes. okay, this is back. Okay, I thought <laughs> we lost uh, that conversation. Okay, maybe you just land on your right. thoughts because we had a bit of a technical glitch yet again. Yes, I was just telling you about the, the situation at Okwama, that's in the really south. 
that the situation is calm under control. And just this morning, the Delta State of House of Assembly joined in condoling with the families of the bereaved soldiers. And uh, we send our heartfelt condolences also to All the right. President of the Federal Republic. Nigeria Delta State is not in that league. And we can never be in the league. We are really, really, really right. empathizing, sympathizing with it. Hello? Can you hear yes, me? I, we're, we're totally so, out of time. I, I was just trying to uh, signal you to wrap Okay, up. go on. Go on. Yeah, total, we're totally out of time, but we must thank you uh, so much, uh, Honorable Frank Esenwa, representing Oshimili North in the Delta State House of Assembly. And we hope that uh, what led to that, the trigger that the required the intervention of the military is handled once and for all. I'm talking about the Oklahoma Oklahoma crisis, but we must thank you for coming on the program. Thank you so much for having me. It will not happen again. That's the prayer of everyone, and our hearts and thoughts are with the soldiers that lost their lives yet again. We'll go on this quick break. When we come back, we'll bring you more stories on launch and politics. Join us again. Welcome back to the optimism. And now to the optimism uh, shared by President Bala Tinubu of the success of his party ahead of the Edo State governorship election in September. At a brief ceremony for the presentation of the party's flag to the Edo State Governorship candidate, Senator Mondo Pueblo, and his running mate, Dennis Idahosa, at the State House, President Tinubu commended the leadership of the party in Edo State for resolving the contentions or contentious issues that trail the primaries. The event had in attendance the national chairman of the APC, Mr. Abdullahi Kanduje, among other leaders. You understand the importance of Edo State to Nigeria and particularly to APC. I am very glad of what you've done as party leaders, putting our hours in order. To our candidate, thank you. To the running mate, thank you. We are putting you forward to be able to hold the party in trust for us and get a victory for us. If you are happy, we are happy. Are you determined? Are you? If you are, we are determined. We are going to walk with you. We are going to stay with you like rock of Gibraltar. That's all I can show you. The party is supreme, but victory is superior. And very, very important. Now, away from that, the Court of Appeal, Abuja, has dismissed the appeal brought before it by one of the lawyers of the detained leader of the proscribed indigenous people of, people of Biafra, uh, Mesan Nam Dekano. The lawyer, Felix Okonkwa, is challenging the unlawful arrest and detention of his clients by the police and the SSS. Delivering judgment, Justice Okonabang dismissed the appeal for lack of merit and substance. Justice Abang held that the appellant failed to establish miscarriage of justice in the judgment of a high court of the Federal Capital Territory in the matter. He further held that from the video footage tendered as exhibited by the appellant at the trial court, there was nowhere the operatives of the SSS were found at the scene of the arrest in the house of one Mr. Ifan Yojo for an Anambra state. The appellate court justice disagreed with the appellants in their claims that two million naira compensatory damages be was grossly in, insufficient. According to Justice Abang, the decision to award compensatory uh, damages at the discretion of a judge and cannot be dictated by a plaintiff or an appellant. 
And I'm done with the court yet. The former national chairman of the People's Democratic Party, Mr. Abello Mohammed, has been rearranged before Justice Peter Lifu of the Federal High Court, Abuja, over a 300 million naira fraud allegation brought against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, the EFCC. He was arraigned or rearranged this time on a four count charge bordering on his alleged role in the diversion of funds meant for the procurement of arms through the office of the former National Security Advisor, uh, Sambo Dasuki. He was arraigned alongside his company, BAM Projects and Property Limited, for alleged criminal breach of trust and money laundering. At the day's proceedings, the defendant pleaded not guilty to all the counts, and the counsel to the EFCC applied for trial date. The defendant's counsel, Mr. Kano Agabi, however, prayed the court to allow Mohammed to continue on existing bail granted by Justice Ahmed Mohammed. The senior lawyer said that Mr. Mohammed did not flout, flout the earlier bail condition granted him and that he would not jump bail. Although Atolak Bey did not oppose that the counsel to uh, the prosecution Agabe's application, he however argued that his bail was once revoked for breaching the terms. Justice Livu, who admitted Mr. Mohammed to bail earlier granted by a sister court, adjourned the matter till May the 7th and May the 8th for trial. Now, the federal government has signed a memorandum of understanding with a U.S.-based firm for a provision of 50,000 full-time business process outsourcing jobs to Nigeria. The president launched the National Talent Export Program on the sidelines of the 2023 U.N. General Assembly to connect Nigerians to employment opportunities outside the country through physical talent export and business process outsourcing. The Ministry of Trade, Industry and Investment... Uh, that's the minister, yeah, rather, Mrs. Signing. Doris Uzokanite, who was speaking during the signing of the partnership, explains that the jobs generated through the latest deal has a potential to annually attract over $1.5 billion. We will to vote this particular And that's it on the program. Thank you so much for your time. And of course, your usual company, I'm Jeffrey Uzonga. You've been served on lunchtime.